Hello. Today I have with me Mike Fox, who runs a number of sustainable funds for Royal London. One of those funds is the Royal London Sustainable Leaders Fund. Mike, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Mike, could you firstly give a quick overview of how you invest in a sustainable manner? So to us, the sustainable company comes down to two things, what it does and how it does it. So when we judge a company, we look at, first of all, its products and services. Um, so good examples of that, you know, a healthcare technology uh, versus oil and gas. So healthcare and technology, we would say, are products and services that do help uh, environmental and social issues. We would argue that oil and gas, for example, is problematic. So we would tend to choose the more sustainable sectors to invest in. And then secondly, as another test, we would also look at their ESG standards. So how are they managing their environmental, social and corporate governance issues? So it's in the combination of two things, looking at products and services on the right side of sustainability trends, but then also making sure that they are responsible in the way that they are managed through looking at their ESG standards. In terms of engagement, could you give a recent example of how you've used your shareholder influence to make a positive impact? Sure. I mean, one of the more recent projects we've been involved in is something called the Just Transition. So everybody's aware of energy transition as an issue. And clearly, we're very much in favour of moving to more renewables versus carbon-based fuels. Um, but one thing that needs to be worked through is that it can have a very big impact on communities. So if you think about, you know, where coal-fired stations have been built, um, often like mining towns, the whole town has been built around um, that power generation station. So it might make huge sense for society to close it, but not for that uh, particular town. Equally, if you're living in the Orkney Islands and all of a sudden there's a desire to connect huge amounts of offshore wind uh, to your small island, that has societal consequences as well. So we've worked very hard with businesses like SSE in the UK to make sure that the concept of a just transition is embedded alongside energy transition, i.e. that you can't just shut, close, build and leave. You have to look at the broader aspects societally to decide what to do. So that's been a great engagement project we've been involved in recently. Companies within Royal London Sustainable Leaders tend to be leaders in their field. What sort of qualities do you look for? So, I mean, I think on the sustainability side, you, you know, it's really about innovation. It's really about companies that, you know, really are changing society through, through innovating. So, you know, if you think about healthcare, for example, you know, there are many, many uh, disease categories um, that still have to be conquered. I mean, cancer being the biggest of them. So we are looking for companies that can innovate in cancer treatments as a, as a great example. You know, and then leadership is in the way that they manage their ESG issues, that their employee relations are very good, that they manage their supply chains well, and that their board structure remuneration is aligned with all stakeholders. And then financially, it just comes down to companies that have leadership in their industries that through, through the innovation, through the good ESG, you know, can deliver that financially for our investors too, because clearly alongside sustainable investing um, and, and picking more sustainable companies, we absolutely want to deliver a financial return as well. Could you name a couple of examples of companies, perhaps that you've held for several years that look well-placed to continue being winners in their respective field? Sure. I mean, I think a fascinating company to talk about is AstraZeneca. So, you know, they are currently engaged in a huge humanitarian exercise to effectively vaccinate the world. And, you know, that has been at times uh, an arduous and controversial task that they've engaged with. But I think it's a great example of a company we own that is societally trying to do the right thing. What they are much better known for to their investors is being the world leader in oncology treatments. So they have some of the most innovative and industry leading medicines for things like lung cancer, which uh, has a very poor survival rate. So that's a great company as a UK listed business that is absolutely a world leader um, you know, in oncology treatments. 
Another one in terms of renewable energy is SSE. So as we talked about SSE, um, you know, it is the UK's largest renewables developer. It is an industry leader in helping the UK decarbonize. So they're just two great examples of companies that lead their industries and through doing that are actually creating a more sustainable future. And could you run through recent portfolio activity in the funds? What have been the latest buyers and sells? Yeah, I mean, I think it's quite interesting when you think about uh, the longer term implications of the pandemic on portfolio construction. You know, our turnover rate um, has actually decreased in the last year. Uh, our average holding period as measured over the last 12 months is, is about 10 years now. And previously it would have been about five. And I think one of the really fascinating things is that as much as there is a debate about inflation and other matters, in an industry sense, it's never been clearer who the winners and losers are longer term, which industries are going to kind of accelerate and which ones are going to decline. So in terms of portfolio change, we haven't felt like we wanted to do a huge amount. That said, um, we have increased our exposure to semiconductors um, in the last 12 months, uh, first of all, by buying Texas Instruments and secondly, by buying TSMC. So as a reminder, we um, use the ability to have up to 20% overseas in this fund. Um, and we think they're great plays on digitization, making the world more efficient, making the world more effective. So those would be two names that we've added to in the last 12 months. Mike, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you.